Hi everybody, my name is Ed Davis. I'm Senior Application Scientist at Genecopia Incorporated, located in Rockville, Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C. I'd like to thank you all for joining me for today's webinar entitled Choosing Between Lentivirus and Adeno-Associative Virus for DNA Delivery. We really appreciate it. Um, before I go into the talk, I just want to go over a few practical matters. First, you may ask me questions at any time. But in order to do so, you will not be able to speak vocally to me because your microphones will be muted. Instead, you'll need to type your questions in the questions box located in your control panel. If you can't see your control panel, it might be hidden, in which case look for a small strip of buttons on one side of the screen. One of these buttons will be orange with a white arrow in it. If you click on that button, you'll then be able to see your control panel and your questions box. Um, secondly, in order to keep the um, flow of the talk going smoothly, I will wait until the end of the talk to answer your questions in the order in which they were received. And in so doing, I will read each question as well as its answer out loud for everyone to hear. And finally, um, I'm going to send a couple of links to you uh, to click on. I'll be doing that in the chat box, which is different from the questions box. And it's also in the control panel, but I will prompt you before um, I send those to you. Okay, so with that, let's um, move on to the webinar. Okay, so here's an outline of today's talk. First, I'm going to give you an introduction to Gene Copia and who we are and what we're about. Then I'm going to go over some of the basics of lentiviral technology, as is, and then talk about Gene Copia's lentiviral products and services. Then I'm going to do the same thing with AV, AV technology, go over some of the basics, and then talk about our AV products and services. And then finally, um, go over the, the considerations for helping you choose which system is appropriate for you. All right, let's start with um, talking about GeneCopia. So um, GeneCopia was founded back in the late 90s as a company that provides a large um, array of product lines for functional genomics and cell biology. So this has most um, prominently been in the area of DNA clones, for mostly for open reading frame or ORF clones. And these are ready to express plasmids that you can, uh, intended, usually intended for mammalian expression, but also for bacteria um, and some other systems like baculovirus. And um, the whole idea behind these ORF clones is that they contain um, um, open reading frame information that lacks both the 5' prime and 3' prime UTRs, and they are ready to express in mammalian cells, fully sequence verified, and come with a variety of tags and promoters. We also have another, uh, another of, a number of other clone types, such as promoter clones. These are um, regions upstream of the transcriptional start site in humans, mouse, and, and other systems. Um, that allow you to drive reporter gene expression. MicroRNA clones, and this covers um, three prime UTR target clones, microRNA precursor clones, as well as microRNA inhibitor clones. We have a large um, product line for CRISPR clones and other associated reagents um, for genome editing, um, especially for single guide RNA clones, which can be picked genome wide for human, mouse, and rat. We have shRNA clones for more traditional knock, gene knockdown. And in addition, as of course we're here to learn about today, we have a number of viral systems. We have large product lines for lentivirus and AAV. And we have a number of kits and reagents, primarily for transfection. We have transfection reagents. We have a large number of luciferase kits for reporter gene assays. F fish or fluorescence and C2 hybridization probes. Indel detection kits that goes along with genome editing, as well as some cloning kits, um, mainly based on phage lambda recombination cloning. And finally, we have a large array of products for fluorescent detection, mainly in the areas of cell function assays. For example, we have kits for doing um, assaying apoptosis in cell types. We have nucleic acid detection reagents for both DNA gel stains as well as um, nucleic acid quantitation reagents, cell structure probes. So we have strain, stains for um, different organelles like mitochondria, nuclear, lysosome, 
And finally, we have the number of fluorescent dyes um, for conjugating to things like antibodies. But of course, you're here to learn about viral systems, so let's talk about our multivirus and AAV. All right, so now let's go into the basics of lentiviral technology. All right, so um, but so first I, I want to I'm going I'm to pose a question: Why use viruses for DNA delivery? Certainly, viruses are not the only way of getting DNA into cells and organisms, but um, and, and one way is is by DNA transfection, but this is not always possible or practical. For example, some cell lines. Um, are difficult or impossible to transfect, even though DNA transfection is one of the most common uh, ways of delivering DNA to cells. Secondly, um, viral infection is often necessary for in vivo or gene therapy applications. So uh, again, DNA transfection just um, isn't an option for in vivo work. And finally, um, most cells support um, viral infection of some kind, and so um, it it um, so that makes viruses a very um, widely used and and very uh, technique, and that's very amenable to various applications in both cell lines and in, in animals. All right, so what are some of the applications for DNA delivery? Um, well. One of them is um, protein overexpression. Protein expression doesn't have to be overexpression via cDNA or open reading frame clones, like I mentioned before, um, for Gene Copia's ORF clones. Um, we have those in viral vectors. Another is to do gene knockdown via RNA interference or RNAi. Another application is reporter assays, such as using GFP or luciferase. And finally, and this is one of the hottest um, technologies right now, um, one can use viral delivery for gene editing via the clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats or CRISPR-Cas9 system. The bottom line is that viral delivery has been successfully carried out in cultured immortalized mammalian cell lines, primary cell culture, animal models, and in gene therapy on human patients. So let's talk about lentivirus technology. Well, so the term lentivirus refers to the class of retroviruses that includes human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV. And in fact, many of the lentiviral um, products in use, especially for Gencopia, are derived from HIV. There are also some products um, that use feline immunodeficiency virus, which is related, but most of them stem from, are derived originally from HIV. So... The genome, this the viral genome, um, is an RNA genome. <coughs> excuse me, of 9.7 kb, and in its native form, lentiviruses integrate into genomic DNA, and they can infect both non-dividing dividing as well as non-dividing cells, which makes them extremely useful for a large number of cell types. All right, so um, lentiviruses, um, lentiviral systems have been highly modified from HIV over several generations, and the idea is to make them um, both safe to handle as well as um, useful for many applications. So naturally, HIV is a pathogen, so in its native form, it's not, it's not very safe and not very and, make, and therefore not very practical to use as a DNA delivery tool. So again, um, researchers have over the years developed a number of different generations of lentivirus um, to make them safe. And the way this is done, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna show the third generation of lentiviruses, which is what Gene Copia uses, is that um, the different genes that are necessary for production of the vir of viruses have been separated onto different plasmids. Okay? So in third generation lentivirus technology, it requires four plasmids for to in order to produce virus. One is a um, is the packaging plasmid itself that can that contains um, um, the gag and pol genes on one plasmid. Okay, so this this is necessary for viral replication replication and and and, um, and um, capsid um, generation. In addition, the N gene has been um, replaced 
has been put onto another plasma and replaced by the vesicular stomatitis VG protein um, in most cases. Um, this allows, um, this gives the virus the ability to infect just about any cell type, unlike the original HIV, which primarily only infects CD4 positive T cells. But VSVG glycoprotein allows the virus to infect most mammalian cell types. The third plasmid contains the Rev gene, and the fourth plasmid is the um, plasmid that contains the transgene of interest itself. Um, it contains the um, packaging signals necessary to, be, to allow itself to be packaged by these other proteins. Okay, so when, um, when all four of these plasmids are expressed in one cell, usually in a packaging cell line, which is usually like HEC293, it allows um, generation of, of virus. However, um, viruses made in this way, once they infect cells, cannot be, cannot produce, are incapable of producing new virus particles. And so basically you can create particles, they infect cells, but you can't create new particles in the cells. So that makes them very safe. In addition, um, the, um, this generation technology contains um, is, is known as sin, inact sin activating or excuse me, self inactivating or sin, which um, makes it um, unable to um, help also help makes it unable to produce virus. Um, and finally, um, the, the, the fact that these there are four um, um, four um, different plasmids, um, makes it un in the unlikely event that um, all four recombine into a functional plasma, the sin inactivating um, quality makes them unable to um, produce competent virus. All right, so now let's talk about Gene Copia's lentiviral products and services. Um, this is an example of a Gene Copia lentiviral plasmid. This um, is used for ORF. Um, expression, but also it can, it can be used, um, we have uh, lentiviral plasmids for other inserts such as shRNAs or CRISPR sgRNAs. And again, it contains um, the packaging elements including the 5' prime and 3' prime LTRs, but nothing else. Okay, and so when this is expressed in a packaging system, it then creates um, virus, infectious virus. And this is an example of, our, of how well our lenti effect lentiviral particles work. Um, as you can see, um, this is um, H10, HT1080 cells that have been um, that have been infected with lenti effect um, lentiviral particles at different dilutions. And um, as you can see, it's you get very sensitive detection of GFP signal in these cells. Okay, so um, Gene Kobe, as I mentioned, has um, has provides um, a large array of products and services for lentiviral technology. Um, these are the three major areas we provide. Uh, one of these areas is lentiviral clones and cloning vectors. These are pre-made and custom clones carrying ORFs, promoters, shRNAs, microRNA, three prime UTRs, precursors and inhibitors, single guide RNAs, and more. Um, so these are available with multiple promoters, tags, and reporters, and we also have cloning vectors for do-it-yourself cloning of sequences of interest. Um, now that's for do-it-yourself packaging, but also we have our um, we have a lentiviral packaging service where we will generate lentiviral particles for you, and these are called lentifect lentiviral particles. So we have a number of pre-made and custom um, packaged, ready-to-use lentiviral particles. These are produced from Gene Copia's extensive genome-wide clone collections or even from customer-submitted clones. So you can send us your own clone and have us package it into viruses as long as it's compatible with third-generation technology. And finally, um, we have lenti -pack, lentiviral packaging reagents. So again, to go along with um, the do-it-yourself idea, if you, if you want to um, package your own um, viral particles, you can do so using um, our complete system of reagents for do-it-yourself lentiviral particle production. This includes packaging plasmids, a packaging cell line, 
particle concentration solution and titration kit. So um, these are the features of um, the Gene Copia's lentiviral products and services. Again, they infect nearly all mammalian cell types thanks to the replacement of the HIV end gene with VSVG. They can be used to deliver relatively large sequences up to about 5 to 6 kb in length, although it's important to keep in mind that due to um, genome size limitation, um, inserts larger, once the insert size gets up, starts to exceed 4 kb, packaging efficiency does decrease. And um, they can be used to generate um, stable cell lines or drive stable gene expression in organs and tissues in vivo due to integration of the transgene at random locations in the genome. All right, so now that I've told you about um, Gene Copia's lentivirus technology, let's talk about AAV technology. So what is AAV? AAV stands for adeno-associated virus. And um, in contrast to the RNA genome of lentiviruses, um, AAV has a single-stranded DNA genome of about 4.7 kb. Now, AAV was originally identified as a contaminant of adenovirus, so that's where it gets its name from, adeno-associated virus. But unlike um, adenovirus, AAV is not known to be pathogenic. And in fact, it requires, in its native form, it requires a helper virus for infection. Okay, Like um, lentivirus, AAV integrates into genomic DNA, but it, it only integrates, generally only integrates at one specific site, which is known as the AAVS1 site, on human chromosome 19, which is also known as safe harbor, because it's a it's a site it's an insertion site that does not cause um, defects to cell biology, and again and also like um, lentivirus, AAV infects both dividing and non-dividing cells. Now, um, also like AAV, um, adeno-associated virus. I'm sorry, like lentivirus, AAV has been um, modified to make it both safe and useful for a broad range of applications. So I mentioned that um, natively AAV requires um, adenovirus for packaging. So adenovirus is a helper virus. But adenovirus itself is pathogenic. So um, what people have done is they have moved, they have separated um, the different um, genes essential for AAV packaging onto different plasmids, just like with lentivirus. So in the case of AAV, this, this, these plasmids are divided, this system is divided up into three plasmids. One is the transgene plasmid, okay, which contains just the gene and the five prime and three prime inter, inverted terminal repeats. But two genes that are essential for packaging known as CAP and REV, have been moved to a second plasmid. And then a third plasmid contains helper genes from adenovirus. Okay, so this now has become an, a helper virus-free system. Okay, so um, now moving the um, CAP and REV, CAP and REP genes to a different plasmid allows um, insertions of virtually any sequence up to about 4 kb although less than three, less than or equal to 3 kb is ideal. So you may notice that this is a smaller size than um, lentivirus, and that is one of, one of the disadvantages of AAV compared with lentivirus is it, accompany, it, it allows um, smaller sized inserts, only up to about 3 kb to be practical. 4 kb is, is the absolute maximum. <clears throat> okay, now another... Um, feature of AV technology to keep in mind is serotypes. So um, as I mentioned with lentivirus, lentivirus in its native form primarily only infects one cell type, or at least at least efficiently, efficient, efficiently, which is CD4 positive T cells. Now AV is different. So AV actually exists in a number of different naturally occurring serotypes, 13 in total in fact. And um, these are determined by um, the composition of the proteins in the capsid. So what these do is that these influence um, tissue infectivity. Okay, so just like um, changing the env gene to VSVG in lentivirus or to another um, uh, glycoprotein um, for pseudotyping, 
um, these naturally occurring serotypes change the um, tissue specificity of AAV. Now, the most common serotype is AAV2 due to its broad tissue infectivity, but again, there are a number of these different serotypes, and it provides the ability to um, restrict infection to specific tissues or cell types if desired. So these are the serotypes um, that Gencopia currently has. Um, these are all but one of the serotypes um, that are available. Um, and they have different primary target tissues, such as AAV1's primary target tissue is muscle, but it works um, reasonably well in cardiac muscle, skeletal muscle, neuronal, and glial tissue. By contrast, um, you might um, pick AAV3, which allow, is best, its primary target tissue is megakaryocytes, but also allows some infectivity of muscle, liver, lung, and retina. So again, this uh, having these serotypes prevents um, provides a large number of options for restricting tissue specificity. But on the other hand, there are um, serotypes such as AVDJ8, which allows very broad tissue um, infectivity. So all of um, Gene Copia's um, AAV technology systems is available in multiple in these different serotypes. <clears throat> so let's talk about Gene Copia's AAV products and services. So um, AV, so Gene Copia has a number of vector types that are available for use in AAV packaging. Um, these are shown here. More more will be on the way. Um, these different vectors, PEZ, AV01, 02, and 04, differ primarily in the promoter that they use, such as CMV or EMV, or excuse me, EM, EF1 alpha, to drive um, transgene expression, in this case, ORF expression. And again, this allows um, you to drive expression in different tissue types. CMV has pretty good pro broad um, tissue specificity, but it but CAG is better for in vivo work, for example. So this provides you with some expression options. So uh, at Genecopia, we have um, packaging service for AAV, just like we do with lentivirus. And again, these are available in multiple vector types, such as that using CMV, CAG, or EF1 alpha promoters. Or you can submit your own vector to us. That's perfectly fine. Um, they're available in multiple serotypes, as I mentioned. Um, which is, again, important for tissue specificity. Uh, our particles are available either in standard purity, which is primarily for in vitro use only, um, at high titers, greater than 10 to the 11th genome copies per mil, or purified, which is what you need for in vivo use, and that gives you higher, even higher titers. And again, the insert sizes are usually should be less, less than or equal to 3 kb in length. Okay, so um, these are the features of Genecopia's AAV products and services. They provide high titers. The titer of purified particles can be as high as 10 to the 14 genome copies per mil. It's often lower, but we can get it that high. Um, versatility, it's usable in a broad range of host cell types. AAV provides low toxicity because of the, um, the way the um, different genes have been separated out, especially CAP and REV. Rep, um, AAV does not integrate into the host genome. Further, AAV provides low immunogenicity, so there's minimal host immune response, and it's safe. AAV is not associated with any human disease, and the um, recombinant particles cannot create new and cannot cannot um, generate new infectious particles once they infect cells. So this slide shows uh, how well the performance of the standard and purified AAV particles holds up. Um, in the top panel, we have standard purity particles expressing either GFP, RFP, or M-cherry, and these are infecting HT1080 cells. And in the bottom is a dilution series of our um, purified particles um, uh, at, at um, expressing GFP. So you can see that even at a very low concentration, you get um, high sensitivity GFP expression. 
All right, so now I'm near the end of the talk, and so I just want to um, wrap things up by talking about which you should choose. Um, if It depends a lot, of course, on the type of application you have. If you um, need to accommodate larger inserts, again, lentivirus is the vector of choice because it can accommodate vector inserts up to, up to about 5 or 6 KB, unlike AAV, which really has an upper limit of about 4 KB and is best at under 3 KB. Um, now, uh, lentivirus provides stable integration, which can be both an advantage and a disadvantage, depending on what you are doing. Okay, So if you want to establish a stable cell line, for example, then you need to use lentivirus. But if you don't want integration, then you're better off using AAV. As far as um, if you care about cell or tissue specificity, then you would want to go with AAV because, again, um, there are many of these naturally occurring serotypes which restrict the, the, in, the infectivity um, by virus, whereas with st at least with standard lentivirus, um, those, are, those infect um, most nearly all cell types, and you can do what's called pseudotyping, which is to replace the envelope glycoprotein, but that's um, usually more laborious and, and requires some cloning. And as far as in vivo safety goes, they really are both very safe, but AAV definitely has an edge, a slight edge in in vivo safety, because again, it's naturally occurring, not known to be associated with any kind of pathogenicity, and it doesn't integrate. All right, so um, with that, I'm going. I'm nearly wrapping up, so I just wanted to tell you. Um, if you want to learn, if you want to know more or revisit this topic on how to choose between lentivirus and an associated virus for DNA delivery, um, we've written a technical note on the topic. It goes over much of what I talked about today, but in a bit more detail. Um, you can download it from our website. This is the download link, but I don't expect you to memorize it or write it down. Um, instead, I will copy and paste it into the chat box for you. And all you will need to do then is click on that link, and you can download Tech Notes. So I just um, sent that to you in the chat box. <clears throat> OK, and so um, I also want to tell you about an upcoming webinar we are having. Uh, we give webinars like, like today's webinar on various topics often. Um, the next webinar that we are talking about is um, for genome editing applications, and it's entitled Applications for Safe Harbor Transgenesis in Genome Editing. So this is a CRISPR-related webinar. It will take place next Wednesday on April 19th at noon Eastern time. And if you are interested, you can um, uh, you can register at this link. But again, I'm not going I'm going to copy and paste this link into your into the chat box. And when you click on that, you can register for that webinar the same way you did for today's webinar. And I just sent that to you. If you don't see it, you might have to scroll down. OK, so with that, I'm going to summarize. I told you um, that about how lentivirus and AAV are invaluable tools for in introducing genetic material into mammalian cells, either in culture, in whole animals, or in gene therapy. I also told you that each viral system has its own unique advantages and disadvantages, depending on the application. I told you that lentivirus is most useful for its broad tissue tropism and its ability to carry larger inserts. On the other hand, AAV is most useful for its lack of toxicity and immunogenicity and its natural ability to limit tissue type infection. And finally, I told you how GeneCopia offers extensive products and services for lentivirus and AAV including custom viral particle production. OK, so with that, I'm going to stop and take questions. OK, uh, so the first question is, um, will a video be available of this webinar? Um, yes, there will be a recording available of this webinar. I will make it, you'll um, receive a link in the follow-up email. And you'll be able to, to just register again um, and view it again as, as many times as you want. Also, I will make the slides available for download as well. <clears throat> okay, next question. Um, 
does uh, what size what size um, preparations does Gene Copia provide for viral particle production? Well, that um, that varies depending on the purity, um, and also uh, it's it depends on um, several factors like your 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 custom needs. Um, okay, any other questions? Okay, okay, here's a question. Um, I'm sorry, I'm having a little trouble reading this. Um, do, what, um, what, what pre-made adeno-associated virus particles does Gene Copia provide? Well, um, we currently provide mostly um, marker genes pre-made, for example, like GFP and RFP and M-Cherry. But um, we're also going to release soon um, a, a pre-made adenovirus, adeno-associated virus particle production um, pre-made for the Staphylococ Staphylococcus aureus Cas9 used for CRISPR genome editing. Okay, are there, um, are there any more questions? Anybody? Okay, well, if there are no more questions, um, again, I want to thank you all for joining me for today's webinar. And um, if you have any additional questions, feel free to call me at 866-360-9531, extension 227, or send me an email at edavis at genecopia.com. And please visit our website at www.genecopia.com. All right, with that, I want to thank you all and have a great day.